forcibly, and denying them self-determination. So, I mean, yes, we've had the war on terror, which has clouded judgment, I have to say. Um, but the reality is that the international community has historically recognized that national liberation movements who are operating uh, in circumstances where they have been forcibly denied their rights. I just want to pick up they on, have the right on what to you resist. said. You said it's, you know, the judgments clouded, um, clouded judgment. What then di really differentiates a freedom fighter from a terrorist? I mean, if you had to really get nitty gritty on it, what would be the defining um, characteristics of either a freedom fighter or a terrorist? Well, I, th I think the, the point is that if, if there's a national liberation struggle, yeah. that has been accepted by the international community as being sufficient criteria to be treated separately. And therefore, i.e., it's been treated as a legitimate struggle. Now, that's not necessarily advocating violence. Um, international law says that those people are entitled to resist if they are being subjected to violence. So m I would put the question a different way. It's not a case of advocating violence to achieve political ends. It's a case of resisting if violence is imposed upon you. And in the case of uh, self-determination and national liberation movements, in that particular case, the international law actually justifies it. In, you know, in the partition between uh, India and Pakistan, um, Pakistan was supposed to be, well, is a, a land for a country for Muslims, and that should have been enough to unify Pakistanis. However, in Pakistan, you'll see that we have clashes between Shias and Sunnis, Mahajirs, Punjabis, Sindhis, um, people that speak uh, Pashto. Um, do you think that, should we then give each of those Fragments, all of these people that are now um, identif identifying themselves as Urdu speaking or Punjabi speaking or Sindhi speaking their own country and divide that country up even more? Do you think that if you had a um, Khalistani state, would then, do you think then people within that country would say, well, I'm this caste or I'm that caste and I think we should have our own little country? Do you think that would, be, would then happen? I, I think you've got to go back to uh, first principles on this. And the first principles are the consent of the governed democracy. If, if you don't have the consent of the governed, then you have no right to govern. Now, if within a particular region you have peoples or nations who do wish to exercise self-determination, it could be greater autonomy, it could be outright independence, whichever form that may take, then you have to respect that. And there is no, in my view, there is no uh, prohibition against allowing people to exercise self-determination. But where do we draw the, the line then? Where do we draw, draw the line between, you know, um, self-determination where, you know, you have the United States of America and you have people there of um, all different nationalities, all different backgrounds, and if everybody started then saying, well, we want a country that's just, um, you know, that, that we all speak the same language, we're all of the same background, we all, um, you know, are, re it's really, really specific. Well, it wouldn't be the United States of America anymore. It would have been fraction off. So my point is, when is a fight for freedom gone too far? When do we then say, you know what, okay, we are part of this country, we are part of this nation, we should just accept the status quo? Sanya, the, I, I, I must come back to this, this idea of the consent of the governed. If there are a sufficient number of people who are, who have the identity of a people or a nation, and they are keen to exercise, a sep to, to take control of their destiny in a different shape or form, then democracy, I'm afraid, requires you to listen to them. Now, let me just, we don't need to go to Pakistan and India and Sri Lanka for this. Mm -hmm. Look at the United Kingdom. Uh, Scotland is now probably on the road towards independence. Right, okay. We have the Scottish National Party who are open advocates of Scottish independence. They're actually the government now in the Scottish Parliament. Now. They're not treated as terrorists. That brings me back to the race card, so, though. Are we, are, you, are we just labeling people terrorists if they're brown? And if they're not brown, are they then just freedom fighters? Is it a, is it a, a racial thing? That's, that, that's a possibility. I mean, um, but there are many other factors, as, as uh, Vijay has mentioned. That, uh, people have political reasons, people have economic reasons, economic reasons to have affiliations with certain states, and that dictates how they treat 
we know that we movements. do. Now, we will all agree that money is what makes the world go around, but, but and when it's our uh, in our favor economically to support a cause, we will do so. Yeah. I want to hear more from both of you. You're watching Broken Silence. We'll be back after this short break. Hi, welcome back to Broken Silence. I'm Sonia Gardez. When is a freedom fighter not a terrorist? Joining me on the panel is Abzal Shah, studying history from the University of Birmingham, and Ranjit Srai from the Council of Khalistan. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, Abzal, what is your take on it? When is a freedom fighter not a terrorist? Um, I mean, I think um, the way I would answer that question is firstly to define what terrorism is. Uh, and I believe terrorism would be anything that would, you know, terrorize a people or a person or a group of people. Um, ter terrorism by its nature should be something which, you know, uh, just goes and destroys things. You know, it's not constructive. It, 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 it kind of um, destroys and dysfunctions, you know, the, the lives of people, maybe mm -hmm. whether that's through um, bombs or whether that's, you know, through through certain violent protests or you know, that kind of disturbs somebody's livelihood um, in a way which, you know, in is fact, irreversible, right. you know, um, and, 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 and that is uh, something that people would fear would be terrorism. Now, uh, a, a freedom fight, on the other hand, would be um, where you've, you've got the idea that the governed should be the, should be the people who should make the decision of who they want to be governed by. Um, and if they decide that they don't want to be governed by you know this particular group or this particular party then they have the full right to vote for a different party who has a completely different mandate and and if that mandate is se secession from you know uh, a, a certain bigger state uh, then you know th then that's 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 what they're fighting for that's that that's what they wish um to be known as 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 an identity uh, if if they can't achieve, achieve that through, through peaceful means and they have exhausted all forms of you know, peaceful protest and lobbying um, and, 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 and trying to get their voices heard, mm -hmm. then they, they need to resort to a means which is a bit more powerful, you okay. know, in the forms of militias or, you know, in the forms of... So then you are of the um, opinion that sometimes, you aggression. know, a, a movement and a fight for autonomy does require a certain amount of violence. Yes, I mean, sometimes it might not, but, you know, um, looking back at history, each and every single time anything like that has happened, because it's... Um, taking away power from you know a, a, a bigger nation or a, a government or a group uh, you know that group will try everything within its power in order to prevent that power being taken away from that particular group right okay well, the one thing where we haven't said and, and I think we need to address is that in recent days especially since September 11th the word terrorism and Muslims are almost synonymous and intertwined. When um, it's reported there's been a terrorist act, it's, it's followed by Muslim or um, preceded by it. Do you think that um, that, that stereotype is um, justified? Uh, well, the short answer is no. Of course, that, that stereotype isn't justified. Um, I mean, as far as the 9-11 uh, attacks are concerned, which were on the, the United States of America, it still hasn't been proven whether they were done by, you know, uh, Al-Qaeda or any other group associated to Muslims. Now, mm -hmm. th that, that doesn't necessarily mean that those attacks that took place were right attacks. I mean, I mean in they, my they own did opinion, have that I believe video they were wrong attacks. Bin Laden saying, owning up to it and saying, you know, uh, kind of fessing up to the, uh, the fact that he was involved with, with the bombing of the Twin Towers. Mm -hmm. So perhaps there wasn't any kind of conclusive uh, fingerprints or whatever, but they had him on tape saying that, you know, he's taking uh, accountability for it. I mean, Osama bin Laden was, was, was the guy who, who um, you know, was trained by the CIA. He was put into Afghanistan in order to fight the communist Russia. And once he defeated them, then, you know, he, he So once a Mujah Mujahideen, the, once a freedom fighter, then goes against what the West is saying is, is now labeled a terrorist. Yeah, because, I mean, America is regarded as, or regards itself as the international police of the world. So, you know, if, if America calls somebody a terrorist, then That's automatically it. he has to become a terrorist. Now, if, if America calls that very same person a freedom fighter, then that same person has to be considered a freedom fighter by all. Well, we could see the, the influence of a country like America just in terms of even Iraq. You know, when, it, when Iraq and Iran were uh, at war, America was right there supporting Saddam and, and you know, feeding it um, weaponry. And then when Saddam decided to stand up on his, on his own two feet and take a stance, he was all, all of a sudden a terrorist. Um, However, in, 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 in the situation with Israel and um, the Palestinians, you've got Hamas there who's actually doing 
the Palestinians good in terms of providing education and medicine, they're still not considered a group worth, a political group that